two competing documentaries about the fire festival and both of them document a disaster hi thanks for watching today i want to talk about the two new documentaries that are streaming one on netflix and one on hulu that has to do with the fire festival now i watched both of these and i want to give you my reaction and review to each of them and let you know which one I like more and which one you might be more interested in. Now, if you don't know, the Fire Festival was a supposed to be a music festival for millennials and beautiful, you know, uber wealthy people in the Bahamas a couple years ago. And it was put on by a guy named Billy McFarlane and Ja Rule, the rapper. Now, I remember when this happened, but I didn't know anything about the music festival, and I really didn't care. Once I heard it was about a music festival for, you know, rich millennials, that doesn't really interest me. And so I, I paid it no mind. In fact, I didn't even realize it was called Fire <laughs> until just this week. For whatever reason, I was flipping the letters because it's spelled F-Y-R-E. I was flipping the letters. I thought it was the Fry Festival sponsored by the Boot Company. I, I, <laughs> I didn't know it was something different. But what these two documentaries do is they look at behind the scenes of the planning and the execution of this uh, music festival disaster that happened in the Bahamas. Now, there are some differences between the two documentaries. The Hulu documentary does deal a little bit more with Billy McFarland and his previous businesses, so it focuses a little bit more on that. The Netflix documentary focuses more on the promotional video and social media aspect that was the driving force behind publicizing this whole festival. Many of the scenes in both documentaries are the same. <laughs> they cover the same things. They just might have a different uh, camera angle or something on it. But what really made this interesting is the guy who ran this, Billy McFarlane, a total con artist, and spoiler alert, he's in, he's in prison right now. But to see how he got away with this for so long when he should have been called out, when someone should have caught on to what was happening, was, I think, the real story. Just how people wanted to believe, and so they believed. And they went along with him not paying people, with all these empty promises that he made. With any scrutiny, this never should have happened. But that's what we have a lot in this world is, uh, you know, we live in a, in a world with n not much scrutiny at all. Now, a quick announcement. I have decided to make another channel where I am just going to review streaming programs. You know, I watch a lot of streaming TV, and I wanted an outlet that I could just put up a quick reaction or review to something that I saw. I know that not everyone that subscribes to this channel cares about all of that, and so I've made a separate channel for just streaming content reviews. Right now, there's nothing on the channel, but I will soon be posting a review for one of my favorite television shows of all time, and chances are 99% of you don't know anything about it, and this is the first time that it's been available outside of the country that it was filmed, which was Canada. So if you're interested in that, please subscribe to my other channel. It's called Coffee and Stream with your host, Tom Coffee. <laughs> but back to the Fire Festival. There's definitely a lot to enjoy about both of these documentaries. One is it's great to point and laugh at rich, pretty people going through unpleasant things. I think that that became one of the big stories that came out of this festival. Um, was just pointing at millennials and Instagram people and how stupid they are. And, you know, if you like doing that, you're going to get to do that a lot <laughs> in this documentary. Now, I'm not, you know, recommending that or promoting that. But also, you kind of get a behind-the-scenes view of what these influencers do and what they are and why we're so interested in them. This is a world that I personally don't know a whole lot about. I don't follow any influencers on any social media. So it's totally new to me. But this is an inside look into that, and you can learn a little bit more about that. 
Now, there were some ethical problems with both of these documentaries. One, the Hulu documentary, they, they paid Billy McFarlane for the interviews. And when making documentaries, traditionally, you don't pay someone, especially that's going to prison for fraud, to appear in your film. Whatever. The interviews really weren't that interesting with him. So that's not even a plus uh, for the film. Hulu also did have an awful computer voice that they used for narration and to read uh, some statements and whatnot. And that was, I don't know, that was cringe. Not, not good. The Netflix documentary was produced by Jerry Media. And they are the producers of the promo video. And they did PR for the festival. They interviewed people from their own company about what happened and what went wrong, and they never disclosed on screen, oh, by the way, we're producing this. <laughs> that was, uh, that's pretty shady. Now, which of these two documentaries would I recommend? Eh, doesn't matter. <laughs> One or the other, they're pretty much the same. The Netflix, like I said, deals more with uh, social media and Instagram influencers and whatnot. The Hulu documentary deals more with uh, the business side of it. But they're pretty similar. Watch half of one, half of the other. It doesn't matter. But I found this worth my time, and I would recommend that you check it out. So let me know. Did you know a whole lot about the Fire Festival before these documentaries? And if you've seen the documentaries, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Peace. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. You can help me reach my goal of 1 million. Make that 4,000 subscribers by hitting the like button and subscribing. Thanks.